everyone. Hi, it's me, Chris Passione, the juggler, storyteller, family entertainer, here to do a show for you. Thank you so much for tuning in on our winter break from school. Thanks to all of our wonderful librarians there at the Northport and North, East Northport Library. Thanks especially to my friend Lisa Herskowitz, the head of children and family services and programming. Oh, we're going to do some stories today, but first a little juggling. So, uh, oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Back and forth, back and forth, and around and around and around and around and around. And, oh, wait a minute. Oh, remember, when you juggle, just like baseball, always keep your eyes open. Uh, and on the ball, 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 on the ball. Always keep your eye on the ball. And, oh, smart kids. That's right. Use your head. Use your, use your head. Oh. There we go, I'm using my head. That is smart juggling. That is four years of liberal arts education right here. Pretty silly. The amazing, incredible round the head. Oh, we could even put one on a string. Oh, if you can see the imaginary string, your imaginations are working very well. Wow, it's just an illusion. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three, big finish. It's subtle. Blah. Juggling books at the library, you can check them out. Were you watching? Were you watching? Me, Mr. Chris Passione, put one, two, the third juggling ball I put right here in my pocket. You knew that, didn't you? Hey, today, we're going to act out some stories together. I love to read books and act out those books. I brought some of them with me. Raise your hand if you read books. Raise your hand if some of you are learning how to read all by yourself. Excellent. Raise your hand if you read books with moms and dads and Yes, good, good. Well, I am not going to read books with you. I'm going to act them out. I'm an actor using lots of our imagination. Imagination? A lot. Wait a minute. Oh, pantomime, or mime for short, is when you use your imagination to create something uh, that isn't really there. It's just pretend. Now, I know what you're thinking. If I, Mr. Chris, am a mime... Why am I talking? Most mimes are silent. They never speak. Raise your hand if you've seen a pantomime before. They wear white makeup on their face. Yes, they look like clowns. And when the mime wears the white clown makeup, they don't use words. They only communicate using their body and their imagination. But I'm a different kind of mime. Check it out. I don't wear that clown makeup on my face. You want to know a cool secret? Oh, I'll tell you, Northport, East Northport Library patrons. If you're a mime using your imagination, and if you don't wear makeup, you're allowed to talk. It's a great deal. So I'm going to use lots of voices today to act out our stories, bringing literature to life with your help. As a matter of fact, I hope as we use our imagination, it all works out because sometimes if you use your imagination, wait a minute, hey! Uh-oh, uh, 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 how are we going to, okay, that's right, lots and lots of <laughs> imagination, <laughs> oh. oh, before we get to our stories, back to the juggling, hey, wait a minute, what do you make of this, what do you make of this, you can make whatever you want, you can pretend it's a, it could be a baseball bat. Or, or can you guess what it is now? Ahoy there, matey. I see you out there. I see you over there. Oh, there you are. Did you say telescope? Raise your hand if you knew it was a telescope. Okay, here's an easy one. Shout it out if you can get it. Can you guess? Can you guess? A comb or a brush. That's right. How about this one? Toothbrush. A toothbrush. I think we should call them teeth brushes. You're supposed to get them all, not just one tooth. Oh, wait a minute. Use your imagination. Here we go. <laughs> you can pretend it's a <laughs> horse with a horn. Unicorn, that's right. Now here's a real tough one. Here's a hard one. I might stump the older kids on this one. I might even stump the grown-ups who are watching. No one is going to... Violin is a great guess. It's a viola. How about this? A flute! Trumpet! It could even be! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! A 
a guitar. Acoustic or electric? Ow! It's an electric guitar, that's right, because of Townsend. Who? Yeah. Pete Townsend. Who? Yeah. Who? Yeah. I'm the oldest one here, aren't I? Oh, but you know what this really is? Oh, I'll show you what this really is. This is the other half of this. Hey. Binoculars, right? What's up, Doc? Bunny ears. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, merrily, merrily. Raise your hand at home if you said paddle. It's a paddle. A paddle or, or uh, another word for paddle is what? A paddle or what? Or like a paddle. Or what? Or what? That's okay. I, oh, but you know what this really is. One, two, three. Hey, what, what, what? Oh, there you are. Three juggling pins. That's what they're called, juggling pins. Uh, let's see if they work. Oh, hey, this is fun. Those juggling books at the library taught me how to juggle, and then I've been practicing. And if you practice, you usually get better at things. <laughs> juggling pins are a lot of fun. Whoa, wait a minute. That went way up. Whoa, come here, whoa. Hey, wait up. That's okay. Raise your hand if you've ever dropped something. <laughs> Me too. All right. What do you do if you drop something? Oh, go ahead and pick it up. That's right. You can go ahead and pick this thing up. And, whoa. Well, that's all right. I'll pick this up. One. I'll pick this up. So we have all three. Ah, hold on. Wait a minute. I've got it. I've got it. Uh oh. Wait a minute. Ah, ah. There we go. Uh oh. Ah, these are hard to. Ah. Hard to hold on to. <laughs> but I know why I wanted to be here today and ask you a very important question. Raise your hand if any of you have ever in your life taken a bath in a bathtub. Taking a bath, anyone? Hoping to see most hands. I know older kids are on the showers now and parents of young kids, it's the quick three minute shower. I have a story. Oh, I love this book. I have a story about a man who loves, loves to take a bath. In fact, he likes to take a bath so much, hey, he never wants to get out of the bathtub. This is no ordinary man. Oh no, this is a story about the king. The king? The king! Thank you very much, thank you very much. And the story is called King Bid Goods in the Bathtub and he won't get out. You can help tell this down in Audrey Wood book. Oh, it's a fun story. Every time I say King Bid Goods in the bathtub and he won't get out, you say it too. Ready? King Bid Goods in the bathtub and he won't get out. Excellent. Make sure you take your thumb to point. King Bid Goods in the bathtub. Open hand and he won't get out. Out. One more time, use your hands. King bid goods in the bathtub and he won't get out. Excellent! The story about the king, the king, the king! Thank you very much, thank you very much. Who loves to take a bath! I will go in and I will tell him. Oh, oh my! Help! cried the page when the sun came up. Get the thumbs ready, here we go. King Bid goods in the bathtub and he won't get out. Who knows what to do? Who knows what? I know what to do! <laughs> cried the knight when the sun came up. Watch this, everyone. King, get out of the bathtub. It's time Shh. to fence, thrust, parry, touche. Touche is a French word for touche. Come in, cried the king with a boom, boom, boom. Today we fence in the bathtub. 
your fan out there it's hot the sun is hot in the summer although actually kids you know it's not so much the heat it's the humidity say with me king big goods in the bathtub and he won't get out good who knows what to do oh no i know i know what to do hello cried the queen oh the queen hello you may all practice your royal wave. You see, it's very subtle. It's all in the wrist. Hello, a king, darling. Get out of the bathtub, dear. Out of the tub, dear. Yes, now, dear. It's time. Can you guess, children? Thank you. It's time to eat lunch. Let them eat cake. Come in, cried the king, with a yum, yum, yum. Today we lunch in the bathtub. Good cake. Help, cried the page. <gasps> when the sun sank low, oh, it's getting late. We better say it fast. King Bid gets in the bathtub and he won't get out. Can you go faster? King Big gets in the bathtub and he won't get out. Super duper fast. Go! King Big is in the bathtub and he won't get out. Good. Who knows what to do? Who knows? Oh, I know. I know. I know. I know what to do. She said the old duke. The old duke. When the sun sank low, King get out of the bathtub. It's time. Can you guess, children? It's time to go fishing. Excellent pantomime identification skills. Time to go fishing. Come in, cried the king with a, um, what kind of fish do you guys like? A salmon, tilapia, Mrs. Pauls, Mrs. Pauls, Mrs. Pauls. Today we fish. In the bathtub! Le, 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 le. Oh, I think I hooked a five-year-old. Help! cried the page. When the night got dark, how loudly can you say it? loudly? Can we be loud? It's a library show. <gasps> Knock yourself out. King Big Goods in the bathtub and he won't get out. That was loud. Who knows what to do? We know! We know! We know what to do! Cried everyone in the kingdom. Hey, king! Hey! Get out! Get out! It's time! It's time! It's time! And how many of you at home, how many of you can do this? It's time for the masquerade ball, the costumed dance. Oh, that is excellent, kids! You're all invited! Parents should just start here, flip it over. Excellent! Come in, cried the king with a jig, jig, jig. Tonight we dance. Can you guess where the king's gonna dance? In the bathtub! Everybody! A hop in it! Oh, wash your arms, follow me. Oh, wash your hair. <gasps> Listen carefully. Wash behind your right ear. Okay, your, your other right ear. Wash your nose! Your chin! Your cheeks, <laughs> these cheeks up here, yeah. <laughs> elbows, wash your elbows, knees, knees, elbows, knees, and toes, knees and toes, knees and toes, knees and toes. <gasps> wash your belly button, <laughs> belly button. I say belly button. Orange County kids say navel. One last time, say it with me. King bid good in the bathtub and he won't get out. Who knows what to do? Who knows what to do? <gasps> I know what to do, said the page. The page in the book? Oh no, there's a different kind of page. Page is also the name of the man who helps the king around the castle. <gasps> I know what to do, said the page. When the moon, the moon, the moon where's the moon? Where, the, the moon, I, where did the moon go? Oh. When the big, round, full moon shone brightly overhead, the page, that's me, 
quietly tiptoed back towards the bathroom, and quietly the page, that's me, opened the bathroom. Can all of you at home help me, Mr. Chris, make a squeaky door sound? Good. Good. And quietly the page reached down into the bathtub behind the king and the page. Have you figured it out? Pull the plug. And when the page pulled the plug, guess what? The water in the bathtub went. down the drain, glub, glub, glub. And when the water went down the drain, the king finally got out of the bathtub and ran away. There he goes, goodbye king! Thanks for leaving! Oh wait, king! <whistles> Get dressed! It's cold outside. King Bidgas in the bathtub, and he did get out, thanks to all of you wonderful Northport, East Northport Library patrons, working together. The end. Oh, you guys are good. You guys are great. Give yourselves a round of applause. Thanks for help. Round of applause? Yes! Clap in a circle. A circle is round. It's a round of applause. How about a square of applause? We can try that. A square of applause? Okay. And Triangle of applause. Give yourself a triangle of applause. And just for fun, you math savvy older kids. Trapezoid of applause. <laughs> Try that. Go ahead, knock yourself out with a trapezoid of applause. And, oh, I'm not sure about what that is either, but you know, you can't have a bath without what? Water. Soap. Soap is good too. So, how about shampoo? Shampoo for your hair? Yes. Conditioner? Conditioner for your hair? Conditioner. The girls say yes. The boys say what? King Big is in the bathtub and he won't get out. A story beautifully written and illustrated by Don and Audrey Wood. I found that book at my library. We can look for that book at your library. Find the book, the Northport East Northport Libraries, and check it out. Say with me. Check it out. Oh. Now fold your arms and say it with some attitude like this. Check it out! Check it out. Oh, check this out. I found something a little silly right here. And, uh... I know. Silly, right? You want to see something twice as silly? Twice as silly, right here. Now you try that at home. Well, that looks great, kids. Well, parents, show me what you got. Pretty silly. Oh, and here's another fun thing we can try, the finger wave. Put your hands together. Hold your fingers up. Start on one hand, one finger at a time. And you open all your fingers all in a row, just like this. Go across one hand, all the way. Keep your hands glued together, then wrap them up slowly from one side to the other. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? But when you go faster, it looks like this. Ooh, cool, huh? Let's go slowly. I'll teach it to you. Open one thumb, just one. Then your next finger, this finger, which, well, you older kids now know, this finger is called your index finger. Younger kids, pointer. Go ahead across to your pinky. Pinky? That's a funny word, pinky. Do you guys know what the real word for this little finger is? Pinky. Yeah, it's still your pinky. Continue to open all of your fingers, all ten fingers. Or is that eight fingers, two thumbs? All fingers open, wrap them up. Practice makes better. How about this? Parents, remember third grade? I think that's about third grade right there. Doesn't mean anything, just looks kind of silly. Oh, you kids can do this. Yeah, match up your fingers. Line them up, match them up. The middle two fingers flap over. You wiggle and then you twist. Excellent! 
Or you could try it this way with one palm down and your other palm up. Come from the side, bend those little fingers, and there you go. Excellent! Kind of looks silly, doesn't it? I have another wonderful story to share with you. Oh, yes, I'll be right back. Oh, yeah, let me grab this here. Hey, I have a wonderful question to ask all of you. Raise your hand if you ever feel tired. <laughs> I'll look right towards the grown-ups on this one. Raise your hand if you ever have a tough day. Back to the caregivers. Raise your hand if you ever hear too much noise. Oh, we all do sometimes. Hey, I have a wonderful old Ukrainian folktale. Folktale? Fiction may not be a true story, but this folktale teaches a wonderful lesson, the moral to the story. A story called Too Much Noise that just goes to show maybe things aren't as bad as you first think. Maybe things aren't as bad as they could be. Too Much Noise. Or the Yiddish version, it could always be worse. Say that with me. It could always be worse. And you guys get to make the three noisy sound effects. Ready? Take your hands over your head like this, everyone. Go ahead. You can do this at home. That's right. And you're going to make the sound of the wind blowing through the trees going, shh. Yes. Second noisy sound. Can anyone snap their fingers? Uh, I can really only snap with my left hand. This side doesn't work too well, but oh, you can practice. You can give it a try. If you can snap your fingers, you're now making the sound of raindrops. And if you can't snap, that's okay. Just put your hands out there, smile, and don't look down. Just sell it. <gasps> Think of a good rain song. Parents, raindrops keep falling on my head. Hey, kids. Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens. <gasps> now tap your head gently, gently tap your head. <gasps> Rain's gonna come down a little bit louder now. Tap your shoulders, tap your shoulders. Now back to your head, back to your head, tap your shoulders, shoulders a little bit louder now. <gasps> oh, a little bit louder now. Oh yeah, a little bit softer now. <gasps> Finally, you all get to make these three cool knocking noises. <coughs> Try that with me. Excellent! Let's put all the sounds together. The wind blew! Shh! Yes! When the rain comes, you run and hide your head. The Beatles! Check with your grandparents. Oh! Tap your head, tap your head a little bit louder now. Okay, a little bit louder now. A little bit louder. Can you feel it? Oh, I can feel it. A little bit louder now. Oh, yeah! A little bit softer now. Three knocks! Excellent. Now I know when we're back in the library, we can't be noisy. And I know we can't make these sounds all the time at home. But during our show today, in this story, too much noise, it could always be worse. You guys can make those loud sounds when it's your turn. A story that just goes to show we're going to get through it. We'll be okay. It could always be worse. <gasps> Once there lived a very tired farmer. Excuse me, hello, how are you, Northport, East Northport Library patrons? I am a farmer. I'm very tired because I wake up early. I stay up late. I'm very tired. I'm always working on my farm. I need to sleep. I'll say good night, good night, good night. Quietly, the farmer lay down in his bed to go to sleep. Hey, kids, raise your hand if you think the farmer did not fall asleep. You're right. He did not fall asleep. Why? As soon as his tired head hit the pillow outside the window. Farmer heard the sound. Are you ready at home? Here we go. The wind blowing through the trees. <gasps> yes. There you go. And then the rain jumps. Ooh, good snapping. Good. Yes, you're very good at that. <gasps> Oh, gentle rain, that's not so bad. A uh, little bit louder now, a oh, little bit louder now. Oh yeah, here we go, a little bit louder now on your shoulders, a little bit louder now. Here we go, can you feel it? A oh, little bit louder now. Hey, 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 hey. Did you do that at home? That was for me, I love that. Oh, three knocks. Wait, wait a minute, hello, you're, you're terrific, thank you, but there's too much noise. How can I sleep with the wind and the rain and the knocking and the eh, 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 eh. I need help. I know. I will see the wise man of Northport. He will tell me what to do. Um, <clears throat> you all can play the wise man part. Kids, fold your arms. 
You're very wise. Add some attitude. Nice attitude, wise man. <gasps> Consult your wise man beard. Consult the beard, wise man, wise beard. That's right. And the wise man asks the farmer to bring the rooster inside his house. Say, excuse me, what? Did I hear you right? The wise man, you want me, the farmer, to bring my rooster inside my house. I never heard of a rooster in a house, but you are wise. You know what to do. So the farmer went back home. He went to the barn. Come on, rooster, inside we go. Come on. Give me here. Give me here. Give me here. In here. Okay, the rooster's in my living room right there. In my living room, a rooster? Good night, good night, good night. Again, quietly, the farmer lay down. Again, his tired head hit the pillow. But again, outside, that's right, the wind blew. Shh. And again, the raindrops. Oh, I'm getting better at snapping now. A little bit loud, a little bit loud now. A little bit loud now, oh yeah. A little bit loud now. Hey, hey, hey. Did you do that at home? Thanks. Three knocks. But guess what else the farmer now heard? Right inside his house. Can you make the sound of a loud rooster? That's good, but there's too much noise. What could be worse? I need to see the wise man. That's you, looking very wise and consulting your long, wise beard. That beard is growing. It's a long beard. It's like a wizard beard from Harry Potter. Yes, one of those big, long Harry Potter beards. No, no, no. ZZ Top. It's a ZZ Top beard. Big beard. And the wise man asks the farmer to bring the sheep inside the house. They, excuse me, what? Wise man, you want me to bring my sheep inside my house? I just brought the rooster inside, but now the sheep too? But the wise man did not stop with the rooster and the sheep. He asked the farmer if the farmer had a cow. A what? A, a cow? Oh no, wise man, please, no. You want me to bring my cow inside my house? I never heard of a rooster, sheep, and cow inside a house, but you are wise. You know what to do. So the farmer went home to see the sheep. Come on, sheep inside we go. Here we go. We'll bring the sheep inside, the sheep inside with the rooster, and back to the barn. Say, come on, cow. We'll bring the cow inside too. Whoa, wait, come on, cow. It's inside the Ah! Come here, cow. It's a very strong cow. Ah! Come on, cow. And the cow. And the sheep and the rooster in my living room. Good night, good night, good night. Again, the tired farmer lay down. But again, outside, well, you know the wind blew. Shh! And the raindrops fell. And the shower. Eh, 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 eh. You know you make me wanna. Did you say shout? It's okay, we'll get you to a wedding. Three knocks. Good. Again, nice and loudly. The rooster crowed. And now the farmer also heard, right inside his house, the sound of the sheep. And let's not forget my favorite, the cow. That's wonderful, but there's too much noise. What could be worse? Who should I see for help? You, wise man, can help. Quick, kids, look wise. Quick, kids, you haven't shaved yet. I know, it's like a Rip Van Winkle beard. Father time, big beard. Raise your hand at home if you think you know what the wise man is now going to tell the farmer to do. Do you know what he's going to say? You're right. Take the animals out. Excuse me, wise man. You want me, the farmer, to take the animals out? But you said bring them in. I just brought my rooster, my sheep, and my cow inside my house. Now you want me to take them back outside? You are wise, and I am confused. But I will do as you say. Oh, come on, rooster, here we go. Come on, that. 
Back over here, come here, back over here. Come on, we'll take the rooster back to the barn. Come on, rooster, all right. And oh, sheep, we'll bring the sheep back outside. That's a good sheep, back to the barn. Come on, cow, we'll bring the cow too. And, um, ah. <clears throat> this cow is very strong. It's a wonderful cow. It's a... Ah! <clears throat> the cow and the sheep. And the rooster are back in the barn. I'm back in my house. And all of you good kids can see that we are now right back where we started. Where we began the story. It looks like the animals are in the barn. I'm in my house. What could be worse? One last time, I will try and sleep. And all of you at home can clap three times. Say goodnight together with me. Ready? Uh, good night. Good night. Good night. And just as we began long ago, the tired, I am so tired, the farmer lay down to try and sleep. But you know, outside, nothing had changed. Outside, things were still the same, right? One last time, the wind still blew, Shh, yes. Raindrops, raindrops still fell, yes. A little bit louder now, here we go, one last time. Good. Now in Spanish. And three knocks. Listen, said the farmer. Kids, I still hear wind and rain. I still hear knocking. I know. It's contagious. Oh, wait. Oh, hold on. Now, inside my house, it seems so quiet. Without my wonderful animals inside, making all that other racket, the noise out there, uh, doesn't seem so noisy, does it? That noise isn't as bad as it could be. If you're tired, you have a tough day, you hear too much noise, hang in there, we'll be all right after all. It could always be worse. The end. If you helped at home, you were great. Give yourself that round of applause, or the square of applause, or the triangle, or the trapezoid of applause. Hey, too much noise. It could always be worse. An old Ukrainian Eastern European folktale. I love that story. It may not be a true story, fiction, not true, but the lesson, the moral to the story is a good one. You can find many different versions of this book at the library and check it out. Check it out. Check this out. I, Chris Fassione, have a very old copy of Too Much Noise by Anne McGovern. I'll get them a little closer here to let you see Too Much Noise. Yes, I know. My copy of this book is falling apart now. That's because this book is so old. One of my first books ever. I was five years old. I was in kindergarten when I got this book, which means that this book is now almost 100 years old. And inside, I have my original book plate with my name, Chris F. I was five. I couldn't spell Fascio, my last name yet. I love this book. This book helped to teach me how to read. That's right. I learned how to read by reading Too Much Noise over and over and over again. I love that book. <gasps> At the library, find a copy. Check it out. Oh, check this out. Oh, I love this story. Here's a short story about, well, you're going to like this one too. Some of you may even recognize this book. It's a story about a bus driver. A bus driver? That's right. A bus driver and a pigeon. Hey, how you doing over there? Nice to see you. Hey, buddy. Nice to see you. Hi, neighbor. How are you? You're looking good today. Hey, nice weather we're having. Beautiful morning. Good to see you. Hey there, Northport, East Northport Library patrons. How you doing? Me, I'm great. I am the bus driver. They call me the bus driver because, hey, I drive the bus. 
I used to drive a beautiful school bus. I can't wait to get back into my school bus to drive the kids back to school. Can't wait. Oh, I don't have my school bus with me right here now, but you can use your imagination and pretend right behind me is my beautiful school bus. Can you guess what color my school bus is? Of course, it's yellow. Yellow school bus. Or as my two-year-old nephew would say, Lello. Hey, would you kids do me, the bus driver, a favor? Keep your eye on my bus for a minute. I'll be right back. I need to go help my kids with some of their schoolwork. Oh, we're working on math today. I love math. Uh, addition and subtraction. Hey, multiplication tables. That's my specialty. I'm really good at my times tables. Hey, guys, I'll be right there, okay? All right. Uh, thanks, everyone. Just keep your eye on my big yellow school bus right here. I'll be right back. Thanks. Hey, oh, wait a minute. Oh, I almost forgot. Oh, the most important thing to ask all of you kids. While you're watching my school bus, if a pigeon, that's right, a pigeon, if that pigeon comes in here, and if that pigeon asks you if he can drive my bus, just say no. Okay? Oh, I know when your mom asks you to do something, you say yes. And if your dad asks you to do something, you say yes. Grandma, grandpa, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it. Yes, yes, you say. If your teacher asks you to do something, of course you say yes. But if that pigeon comes here, and if that pigeon asks you if he can drive my bus, just say no. Okay? Oh, I appreciate it. You guys are great. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm coming to help with your math. We're going to do times tables. Calculus. Cal calculus. I, 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 I thought we were doing math. Hey. Don't let the pigeon drive. 
Drive the Bus by Mo Willems. Raise your hand at home if you're familiar with the Pigeon Books by Mo Willems. Have you read them? They're a lot of fun. The illustrations are great too. Mo Willems wrote and illustrated that book, Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus. It's at the library. You can check it out. Check it out, check it out. Oh, wait a minute. We began our show today with a little bit of juggling. I have one more thing I want to show you with the juggling. Yes, oh yes. So let me just grab my three juggling balls here, okay? Here's one, there's two, and I know I have the third juggling ball here. So why don't we go ahead and I'll show you this one last juggling routine before we have to say goodbye today. And again, thanks, wait, what? What, what, what are you saying? What is it? You say that one of these is not like the other two? I have one orange plastic juggling ball and two orange plastic juggling balls at the, ah! Oh, you're right. It is an apple. Hey, I have an idea. I, Mr. Chris Fasion, could uh, <clears throat> try to catch a bite before I leave. That's right, I could try to take a bite out of one of these while I'm juggling the other two. Which one? The apple. That's a healthy choice. Oh, wait a minute. There is a big long stem on this apple. I would like to remove the stem from the apple before I take a bite for two reasons. First, I don't want to choke on the stem. And the second reason, well, I'd like to invite all the grown-ups to go back to the third grade school cafeteria with me. A, B, C, D. Ooh. All right. The apple and two plastic juggling balls. <gasps> juggling at the same time, trying to take a bite out of the apple without taking a bite out of a plastic one. Here we go. Takes a lot of concentration. All right, here we go. Uh, all right, here we go. Ah, uh, uh, oh. This is hard to do. Raise your hand, kids, if you've ever had to try to do something that was hard to do. Me too. But raise your hand if you kept practicing. You kept trying. You did keep trying. And then raise your hand if you got it. You were successful because, well, usually if you practice, it makes better. So uh, I'm not gonna give up either. I'm gonna keep trying. In fact, if at first, you don't succeed, uh, try, oh, try, ah, try again. All right. Sorry, never talk with your mouth. Oh. 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 Mm. 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 That was a delicious apple. I'm sorry, it was a gala. It was a gala. But it was yummy. Juggling books are at your library. You can check them out. Oh, Mo Willems Pigeon Books. Don't let that pigeon drive the bus at the library. Check it out. Oh, too much noise. It could always be worse. And other folk tales from around the world at the library. Check them out. King Vidgood's in the bathtub and he won't get out at the library. Check it out. Well, you guys are great. Again, thanks so much for tuning in during our winter break. I'm really happy to have been here. Thanks to all of our wonderful librarians. Miss Lisa Herskowitz, thanks so much for having me. Kids, Raise your hand if you're going to read a book over the winter break. Mm -hmm. Some of you are. I hope so. All right, raise your hand if you're going to read at least two books over the winter break. Really? Okay. Now be honest. Be honest. Raise your hand if you think you might read at least three million books. Three million over the break? That's great. Keep reading. Keep using your imagination. And Oh, yeah. Um... Keep working on this, will you? Practice makes better. And before we say goodbye, 
I am going to teach you how to do the pantomime wall. You are so good with that imagination. You can do this. You have to know the three tricks. Put one flat hand in front of you on your flat wall. Your hand's flat because the wall's flat. Spread your fingers apart. Take your hand away. Okay, put it back. Can you find the same wall? Excellent. Now take your other flat hand. Place that next to the first one. Two hands on the same wall. Oh, not a different wall. Same wall. And you look at the back of your hands. That's where the wall is. Don't look at me, but focus in on your knuckles. Rediscover your cuticles. Check out your wedding ring. Well, there's no rush on the wedding ring. The third and final trick. Always keep one hand on the wall at all times, so you take one hand away. Please keep the other hand nice and still. Even lean back a little bit. Come closer. Lean back. Excellent! Hand that came off goes a little bit higher. Take your lower hand off. Adjust your hair. Do You look fantastic. <gasps> Two hands on the wall. Look at one. Follow your eyes. Move it up. Look at your lower hand. Move that up. Now we'll climb down the wall together. One hand at a time. Look at your right hand. Take it off the wall. Move it down. Left hand down. Right hand down. Left hand up. Ooh, down. <gasps> Fingers working. Practice makes perfect. You guys are great. Thank you so much, Northport, East Northport Public Library patrons, kids, parents, librarians. <gasps> I can't wait to get back to see you in person someday soon. Thanks, everyone. You were great. Bye. Um, wait, what's going on? Hey.